Stardate 7x22. Day 10 of Temporal Anomaly Analysis. Doctor. Reporting as lead researcher, accompanied by doctors. A rather motley crew of various scientific backgrounds and what I could consider ruffians. Of course, this does not take away from their past experience, as I've heard tales of a certain few exploits. My intrigue far surpasses my doubt for their demeanor. Though I would prefer Mr. Riker refrain from blowing the smoke from his cancer stick in my face. It's very distracting. Trial 215 status. Error. System malfunction. Override. <sighs> Another failure. At times like this, I wonder if we're ever going to discover the secret of this rift. Someone has to, right? I was just sitting there on my desk when I came into work. A file. Now, I'm no stranger to this procedure. The company rarely hands out assignments face to face, but this was different. Regularly, I'd come across redacted missives and such for select research projects that needed a more discreet hand. In this particular case, I had little to work with in regards to what I should have been looking for. But that was part of the challenge. As it stands, from what I can tell, there was a team of archaeologists on an expedition of sorts to an old temple found in the Arctic deep beneath sea level. Far deeper than where normal people would look, anyway, or think to look. Likely they were hoping to find some obscure gem in the ice, but what they found instead was... <laughs> something extraordinary. Recordings we found with the help of the mercenaries suggest that the team who came to this temple found some sort of cave filled with what was described as the future, deep within. We have no other notes on what this could be, other than uh, uh, a faint recording that we've only been able to get a few details extracted from. They called it some sort of power source. Where this cave is exactly is lost to us for now. Plenty of debris and overgrowth block what I imagine was the path that they took. We, however, will be forced to find another way. Stardate 7x22, day 65 of Temporal Anomaly Analysis. We've had some marginal progress with mapping out the temple. Certain standing structures detail images and patterns we assume are part of their alphabet as well, similar to hieroglyphics in some regards. We've called in a specialist from Alexandria for her expert opinion on the glyphs, as it were. The others are hopeful that this new procedure she's proposed already will glean some new information. I remain of the mindset that the previous inhabitants were possessed of a knowledge that surpasses our own. If indeed the two languages have similar roots, the implications alone would be the discovery of a century. I suppose we shall see. Stardate 7x22, day 97. She is a mad genius. Scares me quite a bit, actually. The further we venture into the temple, the more this strange imagery we come across. One discovery after another, and her face lights up each time. She insists she can understand the meaning given time. Which I suppose we have an abundance of down here if the company sees fit not to pull the plug. She has her theories, of course, but... What is more fascinating to me is the behavior of the local wildlife. Far be it from me to know each and every unseen creature in the depths of the ocean, especially here. But these animals are really something to behold. They seem intelligent to a degree only seen in dolphins. At least that's what the biologist will not stop repeating. I doubt these creatures can really be called fish. Perhaps this will give the good doctor something to focus on, rather than badgering me with countless questions about my work. <laughs> Professor Akila has locked herself in her cabin once again. <sighs> Poor
poring over those symbols we found along the base of the statue, no doubt. I fear we may have hit another wall. There is obviously something beyond the grand structure we have just discovered. An axis is some sort of gatekeeper. The local wildlife swirl around what I assume to be the head of the statue, as if in reverence. I've been having odd dreams as of late. Voices in the dark expanse of the cold ocean, beckoning me past the gatekeeper. I mentioned this only once to the medical officer, and now I'm certain he thinks I may have lost my mind. Perhaps I have. The pressure of being down here so long with no real contact from the company has probably gotten to me. But I cannot shake the feeling, however, that we are very close. What have we... She's done it! She batted her way through the door of our lab, shouting all sorts of indiscernible jargon about doorways and seals and such until we finally calmed her down, but the path beyond the gatekeeper was under our noses the entire time. I won't bore you with the details, but we have finally managed to find what the previous team discovered. The power source they so aptly named is in fact some sort of terror in reality. We've cordoned off the area and begun the process of setting up another camp within to study it more closely. Stardate, 7x22, day 174. It is worth taking note that while no one should approach the rift without any protective gear, obviously my instructions were ignored. Physically, the doctor will be fine. But we have placed him under quarantine all the same, to be entirely certain. The medical officer on base will make sure to keep a watchful eye over his condition. As well as my own. Upon reviewing the footage of the incident, it should be noted that his experiment did bear some fruit. Inanimate objects seem to be drawn to the site of the tear, as if in possession of its own magnetic pull. Trial 387 status... Failure. The machine caught fire, as did several other appliances, although those did not burn. Our first hypothesis was spontaneous combustion, but there were no burnt remains. Each appliance suddenly caught fire precisely seven seconds after one another. Then each fire died out just as quickly. The only possible explanation could be the anomaly, as we are now referring to it, but how could it be doing so? And its magnetic field, which I deduced incorrectly before, is in a constant state of gravitic flux. Each object that is drawn to the rift gets pushed back to where it was eventually. It happens frequently the more we test the machine. No ideas yet as to why. Perhaps the rift is alive and feeding off the polarization. You can imagine how at a loss I am for explanations. For every riddle I answer, I get more questions. It's breathing. <laughs> That's how it's drawing in the magnets. Each time it pulls them in close, it's inhaling. They never get to the rift, almost as if it knows that it can't bring them through. So instead, exhales again. Pushing them all back to their starting position. It's uncanny, actually. I've measured it each time. Precisely back to where they were before. someone fine as this. I've been trapped here for longer than I can even. <sighs> you have to stop. You have to. I've seen what it's going to do. It can't be allowed to find the... No. You. Stardate, 
7x22, day 232. The thing is gone. I can't find the others. I witnessed things in that portal. Things I wouldn't believe if I hadn't seen them. Other worlds. I saw people turning into animals. A, a talking dog. I, I saw trains in the sky with no rail grass. It was teal. I couldn't believe it. Colors I don't have names for. I saw some sort of rodent with a glowing third eye, and I saw that... thing. Larger than any predator I've ever seen, and twice as intimidating. In its eyes, I... Saw fire and stars with monsters at their center. And everything is destroyed. <laughs> I must look to find the others again. Oh, I can't be the only one left. I'm not insane. They're acting like nothing's happened. The lab is back to normal. The anomaly looks like, like someone's ripped a large purple crystal through your eye and forced salt around the wound, and no one said anything about it. <laughs> what kind of fresh hell did we just release, and why am I the only one who seems to remember? I will understand. Stardate 7X22, Day 178, Log 15, Reference Note Number 7. Coming into contact with said temporal anomaly could cause changes we don't understand yet, such as rewriting our DNA, or even psychotic behavior. The odds don't point to anything in particular, and we really need more of an idea what to protect ourselves from, if need be. <laughs> I had a dream last night. Some very tall figure, alone, at the end of a long hallway, with only one light on. It came to me like it was floating across the ground, asking if I had walked the labyrinth and seen its mysteries. I heard its voice in my head, a sound I cannot describe in detail, but one I never wish. I wish never to experience again. I didn't have the answer it was looking for. I'd never heard of a labyrinth, certainly not related to our research, and definitely nothing that mentioned a figure like it. Obviously, I was in distress. I could feel it attempting to latch onto every memory I had, searching relentlessly in vain. And for the life of me, I, I couldn't stop it. In fact, after some measure of time, I found I didn't want to. I admit my curiosity got the better of me. What labyrinth? I asked. I expected an answer. What I received instead was a blank stare and a single line of thought I knew wasn't my own. Send him back. Damn! If nothing else, I can say with a passion nothing has ever given me more stress than attempting to solve this. Stardate 7x22. I think. It's hard to tell the time here anymore. I came back. It's taken me so far away. I can't see. It's too dark here. But I saw something before it went dark. A word. Glowing.